Namaste Galactic family. Welcome back to the channel Indigo Angel. Come on into this dimension. Come on into this container. Come on into this galactic container. I'm excited to be here. We have a very special show, a very special guest here today. This is Sethicus from Black Earth Productions. You guys may have seen the previous show that we had done before on the Lemurian Star Core Codex about a year ago. So I'm very excited to meet up and collaborate with Sethicus again. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. How are you doing today? Absolutely. I'm kicking ass over here, Amanda. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. I I'm really excited to dive into the topic of discussion. We have a lot of things that we're going to cover. Some of the things I wanted to get into, though, approach it from just a little bit more of a personal level today and ask you some things that I feel could be seen as some controversial aspects. And I, and I say this because the last time you were on my channel, the feedback that I got from our collaboration was immense. It was it was unlike anything that I had ever experienced before. It was about 50% of the people seem to have really resonated with you. They felt you on a core level. They felt everything that you were saying. They really tuned into you and they were just like, my gosh, have this guy on again. You need to do another collab with him. But then half of the people I felt were very resistant. They were very taken by your expression the way you expressed yourself and i think they they were treated because of that and how people kind of responded it's interesting i've taken the last year to really actually get to know you open up my energy and experience what you're about the inner levels of you your templating your architecture really i've come to seeing that it's just that you care so fucking much and <laughs> Yep. And I'm coming right now because, hey, and I and I want to give a disclaimer for this video today. I want to let you guys know that with Sethicus, he has a hard hitting and in your face approach. Okay. He has this way that he expresses himself. Um, it can be seen as somewhat aggressive, but I don't feel like that's the right word. It's more of just direct. It's tribal. It's ancient dialect. It's really coming from a place of caring very deeply for the direction of which humanity is going. Right. Um, but yeah, disclaimer on that, because the way that you express yourself, I think, can be a little bit hard for people to take in if they don't really understand who you are, where you're coming from, and and what you, you mean by the way you express yourself. So do you think you can just explain that a little bit? And I well, mean, for to, my right. watching, yeah. You have to understand how calcified people actually fucking are and if that bothers you it's no issue in terms of what i think i'm not responsible for how somebody else reacts or responds to how i am i have no issue in terms of who i am or how i present myself we live in a time where people have been so unbelievably brainwashed to the hilt anything that comes forth in terms of an authentic expression and cuts past convoluted ideas that we've been conditioned to assume we have to be in terms of correspondence of course the programming and the cognitive dissonance is going to kick out it's like that with a lot of other people in my network as well we just keep it raw we keep it real we keep it relevant and that's what's going to take i operate in terms of the true divine masculine energy which in fact is more terrifying than the dark ones in context so if people can't take it there's the fucking door i don't have time for you Right, right. Yeah. So it's it's very direct and it's very piercing in a way that it's going to the core of people. And yeah, that if people if people want to know a little bit about how my templating operates, we can touch upon different systems of gnosis and I think that's really good. I want to know about your templating. I want you to describe what your templating is because there are so many layers and levels to you. It's very tribal, it's very druid, it's very ancient. And I want people to understand the templating that you hold because it's very unique. And I think that it would be very beneficial to describe at your core levels, this wolf, wolf and Alphandar, can you, can you say that word? Right. That's kind of the core essence of your training. 
when it comes to level two of depth with the mystery school, I take people into Wolf and our training, and that's learning how to master the art and science of proper dimensional warfare. We are in a war right now. The war has been on our doorstep, especially since 2020. And if people can't see that, then you're a part of the fucking problem. I have no qualms telling people how it is. And it usually does end up manifesting that way because of my disposition. I have a lot of scorpionic energies. And if you can't keep it real, I'm not going to diminish. I'm not going to tone myself down for anybody else's plausible deniability. Why would I deny myself the right to express authentically in the way that I am meant to as human here on earth? In fact, it's my gift to the world. And if people don't want to receive that gift, you don't have to receive it. In terms of other systems of Gnosis, one system that I have explored is human design. It's a very interesting system of Gnosis, but I'm a projector. And the way that the projector's energy operates, it's like a spear. And it, it's always been like that in terms of who I am. And I always had a pretty sharp contrast with individuals growing up. And it really didn't make sense to me. When I was younger, people either gravitated towards the aura and, and the energy, and, and then other people were actually repulsed by it. But what people need to understand about the templating, especially when it comes to the blue flame and, and, and what I'm actually holding, it's either going to pull people in, force the course correct, or it's going to agitate a cleansing with them, especially if they're hooked in on, they got parasites, they got overlays, distortions, nets, traps, stairs, hooks, ropes, all of these different things that I've mentioned on the platform. And I, I have no qualms, I have no issue in terms of saying it like it is, because I think a lot of people are afraid to express themselves authentically in this world because we've been conditioned to sit down, shut up, don't question, don't express yourself. And it's also to mention that I was in hardcore and death metal bands for over 20 years before I started Black Earth Productions. I was up there on stage bringing forth the message. And so it's a terrifying energy. But what's more terrifying is the fact that people want to deny the actual truth of the hour that we are in right now and what it's going to take to cut past the fucking bullshit and get right to the core essence of who we truly are as individuals here on earth. We are living in extremely, extremely confusing times. It's worse than it's ever fucking been. I'm talking about the levels of confusion and people think they know, but they still don't know the game and they still don't know what's going on, let alone what's required at a certain point to be able to cross these thresholds. What ends up happening because of the plausible deniability and everybody's got to be politically correct and we can't ruffle any feathers or just say shit like it is, it just continues to get layered up in denial. Yeah. I hope I'm triggering people to fuck out. If I'm not triggering people out, then I'm not doing my job. I'm not, I'm not in the position that I'm meant to be in, in terms of what I do and what I've manifested with the mystery school on my end. I can see that a lot because people just see the direct approach. And I think that there's this love and light component of it. And they just want things to be expressed in a certain way. And when it's coming through something that's more direct, it's like you're really fed up with things that are going on and yeah. you're ready for change. You're, you're wanting more. You're wanting to see consciousness expand. You're wanting for people to step up to the plate, step into their guardianship, step up into their true yeah. divine templating. And so has anything of- else worked up until this point on the levels necessary to cross these thresholds? The answer to that question is a big fat no. It's not worked. And the reason it hasn't worked is because of the attack, not just on womankind, but men specifically in our world, PSYOP, all these dudes becoming effeminate and all this different kind of shit. I just went out to a public venue recently and was absolutely disgusted at the turnout. And ironically, the the vocalist of the band that I went to go see, he was talking about the people in the crowd. And if you go into my Facebook, you can check out the lyrics. He was talking about the people in the crowd. And that's how ignorant they were. They, they, they didn't realize it. they're just there to be entertained or whatever. No, the true bards are going to say it like it is. And yeah, I am fed up. I'm, I'm fed up the aeons, in fact, because it's taken many, many, many incarnations to get things up to this point but it's still hitting the ceiling. It's still hitting the wall. And we're getting thrown back on feedback loops and and timelines and time cycles because people Mm -hmm. still don't know the occult. They don't know how deep the conspiracy actually goes. And there's not enough 
proper knowledge and wisdom as far as I'm concerned on the level that not only gives people the proper foundation in terms of a personal path work, you want to run out into all of this advanced stuff, getting into what we're on in terms of star seed consciousness and the disclosure that I just brought forth. A lot of people can't even deal with how their thought and emotion operate. Let's just go there to begin. What is your thought life like? What is your emotional capacity in terms of true intelligence to discern what the hell is really going on, not only in your own life, but the world at large? Where is it really? Yeah. And most people, they don't care about any of this stuff. So someone like myself comes on, I start ripping and tearing and just coming at it. Can you speak on what's going on with the masculine body? This is obviously something that is lacking on a collective level. I can tell you in my daily sessions, my daily conversations, my daily interactions with the divine feminine, there's a lot of disappointment, feeling like the masculine just are not on a spiritual level matching or meeting that. And you come up from this different angle. You're bringing like the, the true templating, like you're bringing in an example of what that looks like for other divine masculines in terms of holding their integrity, holding their morality, not falling victimized to the system. And yeah, um, we don't, we don't plague the victim in terms of anything. And then people want to plague the victim and get the fuck out of my temple. I've got time for that. You, you can go be fodder for the dark ones all you fucking want. But if you want to come on and pull the alignments in terms of who you are as a fucking man, then you're going to be held accountable and, and know what it means and what it takes to rise the fuck up and face the ultimate evil that we are up against in this fucking world. That is a man's true position. Yeah. Okay. Not to go be a slave working in the fucking matrix. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of men like that out there. But then you wonder why relationships aren't working. You wonder why it's all falling apart and why women in terms of, of the programming and the neo-feminist agenda could to compensate for that are becoming masculine men are becoming effeminate what the fuck is going on here yeah this is insane yeah this is not how things are in terms of cosmic law and how a lot, of the, the, a lot of the women that i speak with on a regular basis tell me that they're so polarized in their masculine energies they're very, very much having to be their own safety, their security, their own, See, they're providing for themselves. They are right. um, very That's wounded. That's all a part of the program. Right. That's all a part of it. You're being conditioned to ward against men that would rightfully be in the position to protect, for, provide. But you're conditioned against it. You don't want that. This is how the gynocracy fucking operates. And if you don't think that the female Illuminati is real, you're wrong. They're the ones running shit. They're the ones that run the Vatican and all these fucking perverse religions that have ruled the world. The female Illuminati is running the Vatican. Absolutely. Okay. Do you want to get into that? Look, the way the gynocracy operates, the motherfuckers that are their strong arm, the ones that we see via the Pope and the College of Cardinals and all these motherfuckers are the castrati. They are fucking castrated motherfuckers that serve the dark goddess. Straight the fuck up. They bow to her. Okay, okay. and this, this has been going and I, on. And I can vouch for that. I just want to, I'm not trying to interrupt you, but I want to vouch for that on the sense that when I went to Rome, I realized the spiritual essence in which the historical energy was built upon in terms of Rome, what it came from was the Etruscans and the Etruscans worshipped the goddess Vatica, which was the right. goddess of the underworld. There you go. So I think at the core of that, they are worshipping this, entrapment they are um anchoring in the black madonna systems and templating and they're also um it's feeding off of the sacrificial energy of medusa as well it's nothing new it's been going on for thousands of years but because people don't know the occult they don't know the front script in terms of what they give the slaves to quote unquote believe and you don't know what the hell is really going on behind the scenes i even saw it when i was in ministry most of the fucking dudes were effeminate, and I was not welcome there. In fact, I've seen the seat of the dark Luciferians and how they actually operate on some of the highest levels. And of course, in terms of my templating and who I am, that's not going to fucking fly. I'm not here to bow to anything. We're here to stand side by side, knowing the difference. And when you realize that you've been lied to your whole fucking life, what you've been conditioned to believe has been a lie. The entire fucking script that you've been given. What do you do at that point? 
Truth is going to go through three phases. At first, it's denied. The second phase that truth will go through is that it's violently opposed. And obviously, we see a lot of that happening in terms of the agendas, especially since the early 1920s. The third phase that truth will go through is that it becomes self-evident. And people are going to have to go through a lot more than I think they realize to get to that point. You can't just get online, jump onto a bandwagon, look at some fucking meme, read a book, listen to some podcast, and now you think you know what's up. This is years. This is over 23 years of my life dedicated to this path work. And more and more continues to reveal itself every single day. Again, without the proper foundation, anything you go to build, it's eventually going to collapse back in on itself. And then people are jumping from one belief system to another, to another, one modality to another, to this, this, and that, whatever. And they're just caught in the fucking feedback loop that has been designed in terms of the lockdown equation of the one, two, four. Do you think that feedback loop comes in? Do you think that people that are going through that, they're still operating out of the fallen systems? They're still operating out of the inverted tree of life? Yeah, How do you absolutely. see that in terms of these collective structures of where people actually are on the ascension path? As far as ascension goes, it's as I've stated, ascension happens here on earth. It's not on the other side, some other realm. And a lot of people fall into this fantasy that it's somehow better on the other side or these beings are going to come save us. It all goes back to savior programming. It all goes back to what the Vatican instituted in terms of vicarious atonement, plaguing the victim and everyone groveling at the fucking altar to worship a corrupt image of a sacrifice appropriated in terms of what you need to be taking responsibility for in terms of your own life. But because people don't want to take responsibility for their condition and they want something to fucking blame, having been conditioned to plague the victim, it just feeds into this grid system designed to siphon our codes, designed to siphon our genetics and and consciousness, and nothing gets past a certain fucking point. That's why everyone right now, again, is running back into religion. If you can't see that for the program in terms of what it is, it's literally all set up like that. Yeah. It's so interesting that we're filming this today after Easter. Reruns the crucifixion wounding. Yep. Crucifixion it, 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 it's a blinder. It's literally like an amnesic thing that just happens where yep. people are working towards sovereignty and freedom and liberation. And then, oh, it's Easter. And they start celebrating. It's brainwashing. I almost feel like when that happens, they're actually em- emitting BLF, very low frequency emissions into the grid. They have ways of controlling the collective mind wave fields through the particle accelerators and certain technologies that they can actually just install biblical ideology into the collective reality fields through frequency emissions of of mind wave fields that penetrate the cell grids of the mind and essentially allow people to accept conditioning in which they are being controlled into yeah I, i think it happens every holiday well, that's, um, that's what the holidays are actually for. If the Illuminati had some person who was assigned to this position, the person who implements the collective uh, mind wave control patterns during holidays. Exactly, because now you don't have to take responsibility for your condition. Somebody else is going to come do it for you, and, and that's the problem. That's why the world is in the state that it is. That is why the world has been weakened to the point where they're just putting or these entities that, that are literally feasting upon their essence. It just reinforces itself. Reinforce every single time people go with it. You get to a certain point, you hit that wall, and then you're thrown back onto the wheel onto another fucking spoke. You could take it to Samsara. This is what the Ouroboros is. And you don't get past a certain threshold. I've already transcended that shit here on Earth, where I stand ground level. And if I can do it, so can other people. But you will come up against these forces. You wanted to get into the old ones. You wanted to talk about the parasite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is very real what we're up against here. It's nothing to fear. And to make it very, very clear, how I present myself is really nobody else's fucking business. I can present myself however I choose to. And if you want to judge me based upon surfaces and that, and that's all you're going to deal with here, then then you missed the boat on the track a long fucking time ago. And that's what most people deal with. Amanda, they just deal with surfaces. They live in the realm of effect and they can't see past the layers that are in front of them 
to see into what, what the fuck is I, right. I speak on the behalf of some of my viewers watching today that it's not that they can't get on board with what you're saying. I think sometimes it's just a little bit, maybe the, the tact or the way that you're delivering the message. I don't have any tact. I, I, well, exactly. <laughs> I, I can understand you because I've honestly taken the last year to really actually get to know you. Okay. I have to tell you in the beginning, the way that you spoke, it, it triggered a lot inside me. Um, it triggered a lot of wounding um, around what I perceived as divine masculine wounding and divine feminine wounding. So that was something that I had to learn to trust. Ultimately, and honestly, I had to learn to trust. And so um, over the last year, I've I've learned to trust you more and where you're coming from and actually have began to see a lot of um, integrity and the morality and the actual true codes that you're holding. So that has, it's been, a, it's been a develop. And I think for a lot of us feminines, that's, that's what's happening is there's not a lot of uh, masculines that are holding their ground. There's not a lot of masculines that are speaking from a place of truth and sovereignty. And so we don't know how to trust. So yeah, it takes time, right? It does take time. And, and there's a lot of discrepancy in terms of where people are coming at their vantage point, their background in terms of research and study experience. The fact that you're a woman and I'm a man. There's no equality here. We're two completely different fucking creatures. Are you kidding me? There's nothing that is there to equate. And seeing the uniqueness in terms of who we are as beings here on earth, that is the mystery of all mysteries. And this is what most people can't get together on the fucking level. And then we wonder why all the issues and the problems in the world happen the way they do. The reason why is because we don't know who the fuck we are. And the world right now is dealing with nothing but a massive identity crisis in context where it's boiled down to fucking gender and the body politic and you want to confuse that you're going to annihilate the human fucking race in terms of that specific equation if you can't even distinguish who you are as a boy or a girl or as a man or a woman in terms of your body politic and i've seen it happen women that want to go out of their way to assume masculine energy you're gonna fucking destroy your templating in context and it's the same thing with a man if he wants to assume feminine energy he's gonna destroy his fucking templating he's gonna get right the fuck out and it's happening all across the board it's definitely a very difficult topic and discussion and it can go in so many Not difficult for me you know it's complex it in the way in which we could expand the, the topics on it. We could go into the gender ideology, the gender confusion, role displacement, polarity within that. Also just simple everyday survival as a man and woman and what is being placed on us in terms of our environment and social and economical political stress. We're being hit in so many different directions when it comes to that. So you can't blame an individual who's trying to hold their sovereignty and their gnosis of who they are with having this wavering line of nothing that's grounded in anything that's real. The reality feels disillusioned. The reality feels like it, it absolutely is, is everything that's false. I really feel like this came in with the Trump elections, to be honest with you, like this perception was amplified. What's true and what's not. Government slavery. I don't care what anyone says about fucking Trump. All government is slavery. He's going to drain the swamp and all this fucking bullshit. What happened during his campaign? One of the absolute worst spellcasts to hit the fucking earth happened during his campaign. Yeah. And he called for it. It was a spellcast. Wow. And the Q PSYOP and all that fucking bullshit. The fucking white hats. These motherfuckers are at the top with the dark ones running the same goddamn fucking script triangulated the reality field. That was a massive IQ test in terms of what hit the world. Yeah. And if, and if people can't see that, then you firmly have your head up your fucking ass. And you need someone to tell you that you have your head up your fucking ass. And you don't have to like it. This is how my mentors were with me. And if I don't operate in this specific energy, then I'm not operating in the integrity of my own fucking soul. And who, well, who were your mentors, by the way? Who were my mentors? I, I, I've had many mentors throughout my life. My father, for one. A lot of his lessons were in silence, and he never 
force inquisition, any sort of ideology or, or anything upon me. He, he would always tell me, figure it out, which I have. And he would always operate from a place of observation. I was thrown into the, the arena of competition at a very early age. I got my ass kicked growing up on the mat as far as wrestling and martial arts go. And I learned what it takes to fucking win. You got some bully coming at you gaslighting you all, all all of this different stuff that that people are dealing with day in and day out if you don't stand up and if you don't fight the fuck back this goes for both men and women it's not to say that women can't fight you need to be some doormat that's not what i'm getting at as far as women being in their divine essence this is evil that we're up against here at the same time yeah. fighting is at the core of women's essence if we go back to the original north african tribes where the story of Athena and Medusa actually originated from. It started with contention in female tribes that would fight to the death over yeah, the women on women. Yeah, women on women violence. So this it's is the same thing now. Of the women's it's the same mentality. thing now. Yeah, very much is. It's the exact same fucking thing now because of the distortion, because of the parasitic consciousness that's been amplified in terms of these weapons, technologies, and all these overlays and distortions. See, everything has come up or review in terms of the procession of the grand cycle. Anything that has not been dealt with, whether you are a template holder, like I am, I would say you are as well, because you definitely know certain things that a lot of people don't, all of that's going to come rising to the surface. And if it's not dealt with accordingly, it's just going to play itself out again and again and again on a loop until it's actually dealt with. Look, as far as my point of view goes right now, where we're at in 2023, a lot of people aren't going to fucking make it. There's two main timelines that are playing the fuck out right now. There's the parallel Earth timeline in terms of AI and the original timeline, like I've explained on my platform. It's going to take people getting back to the core essence of who they truly are as men and women if we're going to cross these thresholds. And we come together in terms of that sense of unity consciousness, being at a place of at one moment with yourself and your connection to the higher force. Higher force is the focus above all things on my end. It's not the gods. It's not all of this other stuff that I talk about in terms of, of my codex, even getting into the mythos. I speak about many different things. All of that is irrelevant if you do not have a connection to your core intelligence. You're not going to be able to discern otherwise, as far as I'm concerned. And also what I've observed with other people, and then they just get pulled out into all these different ideologies that are juxtaposed to one another. And then the divide and conquer just continues to play itself out right on down to the dynamic. What you were just talking about, women on women violence, mm -hmm. that is definitely at a peak right now. Stand up and say, fuck this shit in terms of the neo-feminist agenda. That's what all the women need to start doing in terms up against this gonocracy that gave themselves to the fucking watchers in ancient times. That is what people do not understand, is running the fucking game. Behind the veil, where they're operating. There's a lot of manipulation that went into that. Right. Because we're going back into the force breeder programs is what you're starting to hit on. Yep. <clears throat> yep, all of it. Yeah. Going back into when the Nephilim came in and breeded with women, that has been the main story. That's been the main timeline going back to Lemuria, going back 70,000 years after the sinking of Mu. That what had transpired was these fallen angels that came in and mated with the women of Earth. I wouldn't want to put the blame on the women, so to speak. Okay, but you have to understand that women went with it. They didn't just take them. Women went with it. Okay, okay well, this kind of thing is going on now, right? People are just going with the manipulation. Exactly. Exactly. They don't understand. And they were the ones that gave birth to evil in this realm. How else did it fucking get here? Let's talk about that. Let's talk I, well, about I that. Even go, I can even go to the point of, where, of, of explaining how they stole the seed of men. Okay, that, that in terms, I think is a part of the fall of man and, and ascension timelines. And this is where I think yeah. we need to start to differ just a little bit. And, and that's okay because we are really good with honoring each other's perspective. That's what I love about you. Uh, we, we, we've gotten better at that. We have gotten better we've, and we've gone to bat where we disagree on certain things and that's okay. And that's where these topics of discussions get more interesting. I would like to go into the parasite because I think this plays a much greater role in everything versus 
men and women being at fault for certain things. I think that yeah. that we need to talk about where the root of evil actually comes from. And I think me and you have both agreed on the fact that it comes from a micro parasitic cosmic universal invasion impeding upon the reptilian cortex of the brain versus gender. I'm getting it's past 150 million years that this parasitic micro nano invasion started to take place on a bacterial cell atomic level. As far as where I've taken things, what the mythos of my ancestors has revealed in terms of the old one's resurgence into the nine worlds. Trade deals happened, taking it back millions of years into prehistory. The actual animist tradition warns humanity of what we're actually up against here. It's nothing to do with the gods. It's nothing to do with mankind. It's this parasitic consciousness mm -hmm. that inserted itself through the wound gate of dark sorcery into the nine worlds. And the soul goes back to Gulveg. Gulveg is Loki's consort. Loki is the one that wants to be the one god above all the other gods. And where do we hear that narrative throughout time in terms of religion? It all goes back to the trickster in context. With the resurgence of the old ones into the nine worlds, it all goes back to the first war of the gods. This was the cause point of that war. And that war is what continues to play itself out again and again and again in our lives on an unconscious, subconscious level until we catch it. And the parasitic consciousness cannot be negotiated with. This is not something you can sit down, have a conversation with and be like, look, man, you need to fucking stop or this is going to be the consequence. It does not give a fuck. You can't negotiate with it. Once you touch it, or once you come into correspondence with it, if you're not fortified on a certain fucking level, it will take you the fuck over. And I've seen people get taken the fuck over by this. This is what happened in 2020 when they put it into the Needlecraft. And millions of people have been taken the fuck out in context of the squid shit coming out of their hearts, like I've explained over and over again. I have much evidence of this in the Black Earth Library, in terms of the platform with the Mystery School, even to my warnings in context. All of this goes back to the shadow dragon consciousness in terms of the Omicron Draconian and the Odetochron Reptilian, who ironically have also been at war with one another over who's going to be the dominant over humanity and all this different kind of shit. There's battles even within their factions. It is so unbelievably fucking insane, the real scenario of what we're actually up against here. And... Most people, they're just li living their lives, trying to survive, doing their thing. But when you're presented with the reality of what the fuck is really going on, there is no going back. Okay, so I want to share a picture with you really quick. Yeah, go ahead. I want to share this because, and everyone watching, this was something that I did actually go over and discuss mm -hmm. in the Starseed uh, expansion course at learn.nc.com. I just want to show this because this is what you're talking about. Right? Like you're exactly talking about the micro parasite. We're talking about the Cthulhu and we're talking about the nano necromaton mm -hmm. and explain how this invasion or infection of the old dark ones originally started and how it invaded again the reptilian cortex. This is nothing new. That's what people need to understand that this is nothing new. Right. Yeah. Um, this is. This has a lot to do with, um, also, I just want to, I want to add some things here. Mm -hmm. um, there has been a lot of scientific proof that humanity wouldn't be alive at all if it wasn't for ancient viruses infecting us. Um, it comes down to that even 10% remains of our human genome could have come from viruses and bacteria, such as the common cold all the way to HIV and AIDS. Um, and that it may have been um, a part of the evolution of our species, dormant portions of the 64 codons in the body that have unawakened humans currently using only 20, but that these viruses or these ancient parasites may be awakening more um, aspects of the, D of the DNA as well. We're going through a time of hypermutations or hyper hybridizations and that it's... Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree with that. As okay. as no, I'm not saying factor that in terms of our actual awakening. What do you yeah, mean? I'm not saying this is a good thing. I'm saying that it could be activating portions of the codons of the DNA that we're not aware of. It's, it's definitely amplifying the distortions in context. Right. It's pulling people further and further into these sub realms in terms of, of these lower grid works that 
they operate from. Yeah. Yeah. So 150 million years ago, the synaptin protein was mutated, the placenta in mammals. So this is where the evil came in, in terms of birthing, that the placenta itself from a virus. That's a good way to demonize humans. It is a good way to demonize humans. This is all stuff that you can research. I mean, this is all scientific studies. It brings another mind-blowing aspect into the dissension of our existence here. I could see how this manipulated the human genome in context to giving birth to fucking evil in the world. That's exactly what they did. Yeah. How were they able to do that in terms of what you just mentioned? Yeah. That was already present here on Earth, not just Earth, but Maldek going back all the way to Tara and the three Ragnaroks that uh, humanity has been through since what happened happened. Yeah. I want to say that what happened parasitically in terms of the old dark ones and the parasites, that this, I'm getting the 150 million year marker, that, that something exploded around that time that had to do with the time of the dinosaurs, had to do with the time of the Dracos, the reptilians, that those particular bloodlines, something happened within the parasite in terms of invading that particular bloodline or that particular vortex, because it's like, why are these types evil in the first place? That's what I want to know. Why? Yeah, why? Why is it? Is it because of the invasion of the parasite 150 million years ago? We have light, we have dark, and not all darkness is bad, but then we have evil. We have this whole other spectrum of what evil is, and we're classifying it no, right now. Darkness is ignorance. Light is knowledge. Darkness is ignorance. Evil is what devours life. But there's living energy in the shadow. Right, right. And that necessarily is not evil. That is no, just... Right. right. But ignorant of that fact of what's there within your core, and you got to go into those corridors of ignorance in terms of, of darkness to extract the true light of consciousness that's there in terms of the gold. That's what the system of alchemy teaches. So darkness in and of itself is not evil. Right. It just means ignorance of who you truly are. And where you got to go and face it. Yeah. Unconscious. It's terms and semantics, right? And everyone has their mm -hmm. ways of explaining things, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't like the English language because we uh, can get a lot of cross streams coming through. And that's why context is, is so important in terms of, of, of what we're explaining here. So right. um, we all deal with high levels of darkness in terms of who we are. And the ignorance and context, until you go into the corridors and extract what is there and pass the overlays and distortions of what would pull you in the potential devourment in denial of that ignorance, because everyone wants to be right in their own eyes. One thing that I really, really observe, so many people are afraid to be wrong about shit nowadays. When did it become conducive to be right all the fucking time? As far as evil is concerned, it is not from this realm. It is it is from another dimension. And in terms of dark rituals that were enacted in ancient times, they ripped open the fucking right, so it, it, right, But what realm is that? You got to take things back to cosmic law and how things actually work. It's all about our state of mind. That's the first cosmic law. But where is this? Where is this uh, uh, coming from? Because I've done some studies on Venus, and mm. Venus is a highly bacterial planet because of where it is in location to the sun it generates bacteria because of the warmth yep. and bacteria can flourish on that planet so is it coming from our own universal system right when you study cosmic law and you come to learn how things actually work the cosmic law of correspondence is where a lot of people are hitting this fucking wall they don't realize that the heavens are within us all of the planetary bodies Everything that we see in the stars and everything in terms of codes getting into Arcturus and Orion and all these different things is within. It's within us here on ground level. And all of these things in terms of the manipulation of the law of correspondence goes back to, to what we're talking about here when they ripped open this fucking goddamn wormhole. And this parasitic consciousness was able to insert itself. And, and then, of course, how it plays out in sci-fi, we don't realize what we are observing or is what's happening to us. Does parasitic invasion come through the ripping of the wormhole, or is it coming from our planetary systems? That's the question. Is, is, is it truly coming through the WISA, the black hole, the phantom realms, or is it coming through our actual planetary system? It's coming through individuals that went against protocol in ancient times and started fucking with shit that they shouldn't have 
go back to what I was saying about Loki and all this different shit when they made trade deals with the fucking old ones so that they could be the fucking gods. So that they could be the ones that fucking rule. Also, mm-hmm. in correspondence with the Spartathar, which I'll go back to the Fallen Anu and all this other stuff that I've explained on Black Earth production. Th- this is way, way, way more ancient than the narratives that, w- that we have been given in the public sector. A little bit of the drip the last 20 fucking years, but it goes way, 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 way back. Yeah, guys, and I really recommend to go check out Black Earth Productions, blackearthproductions.com. You can find his website here. Z.com with a Z, right. Okay, with a Z. (laughs) And you guys can check out uh, what he's got going on here. I really recommend um, going and checking out his website and all the stuff that you have going on because you have quite a bit in terms of services and sessions and videos and teachings that you offer. So as you're talking about it, I just wanted to explain that because... It's fucking wild what has actually happened here. And without proper initiation into the occult, good luck navigating it otherwise. Because there's so much information that we are being flooded with day in and day out. How the hell are you going to navigate all of this stuff if you don't have viable, proper knowledge and wisdom to actually focus on when it comes to an actual path work for your life? that's going to reveal to you who you actually are and why you are here on earth. So having that said, let's talk about the blue flame, your occult and mystery school. Yeah. The blue flame healing arts. When I lay down, I observe the blue flame. It's within my aura quite literally. And the blue flame specifically goes back to a major, major portion of the primal sound fields to the eternal collective consciousness of the higher force itself. It's what originally seeded reality on a multidimensional level, but it's what the fuck we've been cut off from. And getting into different teachings that are out there, people would elude some of what I'm saying to Keelantic science, although I think there's a lot of distortions held within that specific material, not to mention the, the divide and conquer that took place back in, in 2012 between Ashiana Dean and, and Michael Dean. I was one step away from actually having Michael on Black Earth Productions. I was one conversation away from getting him on before he actually passed away. The chaos was infiltrated and subverted. And where it's gone, what I've observed, all this Alhambra bullshit is a part of this distortion. In context, I have ancient Syrian B genetics myself. And when I started observing this material many, many years ago, it was as if I was getting a recap of things that I already knew within myself all my life. And it wasn't so much the energy work. It wasn't so much things to do with a lot of the quote-unquote healing modalities. It was the actual history Mm -hmm. that was revealed. A lot of it, though, is overtly Christianized, and I'm not down with that religion whatsoever. I'm not going to go way deep into that. If people want to know, they can come onto the platform and check out some of the segments that I presented. Again, without the proper foundation in terms of actual initiation, it's going to become very difficult for people to navigate all of this other advanced material. They jump into it and they think that this is what the truth is, but then after a certain amount of time, they don't realize what they're actually getting hooked into in context. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it happen. People I think that the separate people from their gnosis. Yeah. Um, I think that there is possession on the literature, to be honest with you. I feel right. like it can possess people. I knew that from the get, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to be very careful with that material because of the weight that it holds and the information that it brings forward. And to not allow it to separate you from your own connection to the divine and right. your own uh, moral compass, so to speak, when it comes to what is and what isn't. It's amazing information, but you do have to utilize your discernment with it in a lot of ways, for sure. It takes years. It takes years to actually discover what the fuck is going on. You can't just crack open the book. You read a couple pages. Now you think you know. And now you're going to start making posts or fucking segments about this shit. But a lot of people run with it like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The blue flame does go back to the staff of Amente in context. And I've accessed Amente in terms of my personal path work and records that are well beyond anything that are in literature in terms of fragments. And so what's been revealed to me is that the new mythos is going to be instituted into the world. This is where we're at. Again, like I was saying, everything in terms of the procession of the grand cycle, everything's back up for review. 
So anything that has not been dealt with up until this point, it's all flying the fuck out of the fucking can. A lot of people are going with many of these things because they, first of all, don't know how to navigate consciousness. And they think that they're a part of something special. Or they think that they're enlightened because they got activated with their fucking star code. And I'm not saying that's not an important factor, but we're here on earth and the earth is our altar. We are here for a reason. And Mm -hmm. I'm not into spiritual escapism as far as modalities go. It's no different than fucking religion. We're not any more special than the next individual just because we have a certain templating. If you got templating like me, it just means that you have a lot more responsibility here on earth than the average individual. And if you don't pull the alignment in terms of who you are and what your templating is, then your life is completely fucked at a certain point. Good luck going out into the matrix and trying to be normal like everybody else. It doesn't work. You have to be who you are. And if you don't know who you are... Well, it starts with the blue flame, doesn't it? I think most star seeds come back to resonating. The blue flame is the internal flame of the fire. So if you were to look it's into the fire, sound fields, right. it's the first flame. So it's it's purity, it's truth, it's resurrection, it's justice, it's immortality. Right. There is so much frequency wise that that contains and, and, and the essence of that is and so do I think all of us are blue flame star seeds? I don't really know. Um, I've associated the blue flame to the Aldebaran system with it being the Archangel Michael Collective. How do you feel about that? Fuck Archangel Michael and all the fucking goddamn angels. Okay. They operate on a triangulation in terms of the Hall of Mirrors. This is sub realm, lower astral fucking bullshit. But as a healer and someone who works with people on the level of energy work, there is a there is everybody comes forward with the trust in archangel michael so maybe speak on that a little bit with how do people discern this energy this collective because i feel it's very polarized i feel what is the blue flame the archangel michael collective ley line that's emanating from the through cern all the way up through to ireland that that it is the most siphoned energetic planetary resource in terms of the ley lines. It's the most yeah. siphoned, it's the most attacked, and the reason why is because it's the most powerful. Right. And That's they want to placate right. cheap counterfeits in terms of greater works of consciousness that play on certain codes. That's how they operate. That's how religion operates. That's how all of these false teachings operate in terms of the New Age movement and all this fucking bullshit. It placates to certain codes that are within our template as human here on Earth. Okay? How do people discern? Because I think it gets very confusing. How do we trust in the blue flame anymore when we know that the ley lines are tampered with AI? Leyline, the Archangel Michael Leyline is tampered with AI. It has nothing to do with the blue flame. How does it it, Like I said, all they can do is mimic and mirror what is. They are not creator beings. All they can do is mimic the convoluted version of what actually is, plays on the codes like I just explained, and then pulls you into these grid works. You get blissed out. You think you're ascending. You think you're in connection with what is benevolent. So it becomes true. Is, it becomes what's true to the individual's discernment, basically. It doesn't matter what anyone's opinion is as far as what they allegedly discern. What do you mean by that? There's a lot of confusion around this. Right. It, it's Absolutely. deception. And a lot of people call upon Archangel Michael as their guide, as their way shore. I mean, like, I'll be honest with you. It's a level of safety and comfort for, for many I would say the bulk of the collective. Right, because they don't have to take responsibility for their condition. They can pass the buck off and something else is going to come do it for them. That's not how it works here. That's not how it's ever worked as far as the bio-spiritual regenesis goes. Okay. And the original purpose of incarnation here on Earth. And why would it Anything that relies upon Archangel Michael is bypassing in terms of the real internal work. It's not actually the, right. the resonance of the blue flame and what it means. Right. Okay. Exactly. It's nothing it's to do with the true, true. They have all of their counterfeit grid work set up in terms of host fields for those that are unwitted that do not know the occult. Okay. And I have enough experience to know the difference because I've had actual interface with these beings. And one thing that they said to me was, if you bow to us, we'll give you the world. It goes back to that whole notion of selling your fucking soul and all this different kind of stuff. And people can take what I say or leave it. But when it comes to my actual experience 
and what I've gone into in terms of research and study to even verify my actual experiences. All of these counterfeit overlays and distortions in terms of grid works of consciousness have been set up by the watchers in context of the Sparta of I take it back to the mythos of my ancestors warned humanity against this fucking shit. And that is who these beings are. Okay. They play both sides of the triangulation factor of the one, two, four, five, seven, eight. That's the lockdown equation manifested from 2020. Why did lockdown reveal itself in 2020? Because it's being pushed out of our reality field. This is being confronted by those of us that are templated with the real here in context. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm calling it out the way that I am, because I know the difference in terms of my templating. I get that you're carrying this very pure templating. You're pushing it out from the base level of purity, going into the blue flame and what it actually means, and then pushing everything out that isn't. I just see these layers and I see all of these different Decepticons, these different collective illusionary fields of reality, where people are clinging on to levels of codependency within that. And how do we really help people to discern through that so that way they can be of the purest light and energy and really filter through what is well, a Decepticon? Like I stated in the beginning, when it comes to the mystery school that I've been able to recreate in the earth again, the higher force is the focus above all things, not the fucking beings, not the angels, not the fucking aliens and all this different kind of stuff. That sort of phenomenon does exist. And I'm not saying that the draconians and, and, and the reptilians and the greys and the insectoids aren't a factor here in terms of what we have experienced as individuals. Without that focus of the higher force... Good luck navigating it otherwise. You're not. Mm -hmm. You'll get caught in all the nets, traps, and snares. That How do people know that they're even connected at this point? It seems like it's right. so convoluted. It's so convoluted that people cannot right. distinguish what's Archangel Michael, what's the pure blue flame. Like, there's so much distortion around this. You have to understand, people want to be on the, the right path. They really do. Reaching towards the highest truth. How can they discern through that? Because it feels... I feel like I'm feeling for a certain collective right now as I say this. That's why I'm expressing it to you, because I feel but like I'm... It's, it's, it's pretty much 90% of individuals still have not established connection to their core intelligence and experienced that star core ignition. That's the mark. When this explodes and the first eye opens, the true eye of Ra, the eye of Ra, the flesh of Ra, is the first eye. People speak about the third eye. You have your physical eyes, but nobody talks about the first eye. The first mm -hmm. eye ignition, right? And that's the heart. The first eye is in the heart. When that opens for real, you get a 360 degree view of what the fuck is really going on. And at that point of any sort of potential triangulation that can enter into a situation, you're able to override and transcend it immediately because you already have this way of perceiving in terms of process. Okay. It's perception, the process. In terms of templating, you have the nervous system. The very first physical organ that grows in the womb is the heart. So everything you are at the core, everything you were in terms of ancestors, everything you will potentially become is accessed via the first eye. Spraying forth the nervous system. Also the tongue in terms of the heart. So the metaphysical phenomenon in terms of the law of correspondence manifests the body politic. Accessing hardcore intelligence is absolutely vital in terms of the hour that we are in and the science of the circle of the magician how i teach it i'm not in the business of conjuring incantation summoning or invocation of any being in the known universe the way that i teach this is designed to ignite your own eternal spirit why would any magician or their salt be consulting lesser entities when you have your own eternal spirit that's already connected to the all that's already connected to the higher force and see this is what everything convoluted throughout the aeons has been designed to cut us off from as you speak about this i'm tuning into the lyran wars and i feel like the blue flame has a lot to do in terms of what happened here. This was like an ignition point, the blue flame. Not that this was the origination of it, but that the Lyran descended aspects actually brought forth this consciousness to the earth. It has to do with humanity and who we right. truly are. And well, the reason why I go back to that is because I tracked this blue-skinned type of being that goes back to 
what the Byron's originally seeded here. They seeded the original blue skinned beans. Because remember we were talking about this the other night and we were talking about the, the Tauric tribes in North Africa, how they had blue skin, how we were talking about Shiva and how he had blue skin and how some of these other tribal beans, some pictures that you had sent me. You can take it back to the pics. Right. Take it back to the Alfar, which were the original humans in context. And I have very, very strong Alfarian codes within my templating. And that the blue-skinned people may have been the original blue flame holders, right? Yeah, to make and a correlation. I, yeah, there's a lot of correlation. And so I feel like that and somehow has this very strong avian signature, whether it's the Stymphalian birds, so Aquila, Lyra, and Cygnus. It would make sense to me as what I've known about Cygnus is that the original true uh, indigo template holders, so all ancient indigo template holding records, resided originally in the Cygnus system and that the blue flame template holders are the primordial avian soul bodies here. Mm -hmm. um, so they fly above the um, contention of humanity. And in that terms of my template, I have ancient Egyptian high priests, avian genetics in terms of Octorus and Orion. That's why I know what I know about Kemet. And in terms of the lineage that I incarnated here on Earth, I've shown you the evidence. We don't need to get into that. But it's pretty fucking clear. Right. So I'm not just a mere man that dropped into the earth. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I chose to come here. And I came here for those that are ready to graduate, this motherfucker. It's not up to me who decides that. It's up to individuals that want to, want to come on to the true path and learn to discover how to lay the proper foundation and learn to discover who they actually are and override these overlays and distortions and all of the fucking programming, all of the nets, traps, and snares and hooks and ropes that are designed to pull them into counterfeit post-field grid works of consciousness that play on the codes. This was all set up by the dark factions in terms of Gulveg, Loki, where dark sorcery was birthed into the nine worlds, not only in the god realms, but here on Earth in terms of our universe when it comes to Midgard. This is ultra, ultra ancient, ancient stuff that I'm alluding to here. A lot of the stuff that people have been into over the years is a much later rendition, watered down version of what is actually going on behind the scenes. It's a lot. It is a lot. So, yeah, we just want to invite everybody watching today to be able to process this information. I want to ask you, Sethicus, one last question. How do you see the Law of One, then? Do you, are you a subscriber to the Law of One? Do you feel that this is the ultimate truth? How do you feel about that? That's a The Law of One in context to what? The Law of One in context to humanity and what we're all doing here. And as we process through all of this information, does it come back to the Law of One? If we're not... Are we in alignment to some other belief system that negates from the path that we are all one and that truly there's multiple division and this warfare is justified on some level because it does seem like the majority of the human lifespan is in a contention cycle where we are up against warfare, that we have lesser amounts of time and we're in states of peace versus states that we are in war. And so whether it's a flipped and reversal oppositional viewpoint or a lens of that, that we are fighting what is the law of one at all costs. What's your take on that? My take on the law of one goes back to this. Are you at a place of at one moment with who you truly are? The original template that we need to access is the template in terms of who we truly are. How can we be one with anything in terms of nature and the universe if we are at an extreme place of disassociation in terms of who we truly are as individuals, solidified bodies on ground level, making the earth our altar? Everybody wants to fall into this spiritual escapist bullshit, the idea that we're all one on the other side and it's all love and it's all light. No, it's absolute total fucking war on the other side of the equation, preventing individuals from making that connection on ground level because when you make that connection on ground level you are able to anchor into the earth realm what we have been cut off from and we're not going to be able to come together 
and connect on the level that we can until that happens. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for speaking with everyone watching today and, and with me and for giving your perspective. It's truly interesting. I think a lot of the concepts that you're bringing forward around these things, it's definitely food for thought, for more truths, for people to integrate and be able to uh, see humanity in a different light where we can really ground into deeper levels of truth. So yeah, thank you so much. And I'm really excited to have talked with you today. I know we've been kind of uh, waiting to come back around and collaborate again. So it's been such a pleasure to have you here and is there anything else you want to say to everyone today in terms of any messages for everyone today as far as the lineages that i've incarnated it does go back to the magi grail shaman it does go back to dragon lineage and context this is something else that we put down in terms of footnotes and the the original alignment of thuban when it, when it comes to the Drago constellation is what we were originally torn away from here on Earth. Going back to the three main cataclysms that have taken place. The first one, obviously, Tara. Second one to Maldek. The third one, the most recent cataclysm that happened here on Earth, is when that alignment was pulled off into the lunar north in terms of Polaris. Yeah. Since that time, at least the last 13,000 years, Humanity has been caught on this feedback loop cycle throughout the centuries, all designed to keep us on a skip in the record. And until the true proper knowledge and wisdom is made self-evident to the individual, it has done the real work to attain the original template that is who you truly are. You're not going to transcend this motherfucker. It's not going to happen. You're just going to go from one thing to another to another in terms of the spokes that they keep throwing out on the wheel. It's much easier said than done. We can allude to a lot of different things, but we are in a war and the war has been on our doorstep since 2020. And unless men and women rise up as men and women in the world at a place of that woman with ourselves and one another, then you can expect the dark ones to continue to rule and reign this fucking reality field. But the minute we make that decision to remember and rise up and finally see the full picture, that 360 degree view of what is really going on, that is when it's going to transcend. And the dragon consciousness is the true phallic energy of the divine masculine. And I'm here templated with that. So that's what I represent here on earth. So thank you. I honestly feel like we could definitely go deeper into yeah. more of it. But it's a process of revealing more as we go. And I really appreciate you being present today and diving in with me. So yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for everyone watching. We'll be back with the next show. Namaste.